Praise the Lord. Greetings to you, beloved, in the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I trust that you are blessed. So this is part three of our Bible study on the book of Genesis. In part one and two, we studied Genesis chapters one and two, where it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created every living thing in the earth, including the trees, the plants. He created the animals in the air, on land and in the sea. And he created man in his own image and likeness and gave man authority to subdue the earth. And when he saw that man was lonely, he used one of man's ribs to create woman for man and placed them in the garden of Aden, where he told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And then he told them they could eat of every tree and plant in the garden, but they must not eat of only one tree. And this is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And at the end of chapter 1 of Genesis, the Bible says that God saw that everything he had made was very good. In chapter 2, at the end, it says that the man and woman were both naked, but they were not ashamed. So this is a quick review on both 1 and 2 um, chapters of the book of Genesis. Beloved, if you have not watched part 1 and 2, please watch it on this channel to gain more understanding and knowledge on the word of God. So then we, this brings us to the topic of today is uh, chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. And this is where sin began. So beloved, let's hear the word of God. So Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden but beloved we know that this statement the serpent made is a lie because god said in genesis 2 16 that you must eat from every tree of the garden except one and we know that it was the enemy or devil speaking through this serpent because jesus lets us know in john chapter 8 verse 44 where it says that Satan or the enemy was a murderer from the beginning, refusing to uphold the truth because there is no truth found in him. So beloved, whenever we are reading the Bible and we come across anyone who tells lies, this refers to the enemy or Satan. And this is why we know that it was the enemy using the serpent's body to speak to Eve. And in the beginning, Satan or the devil was not evil because he was an angel whom God anointed. And let's read, beloved, in Ezekiel 28 verse 14, what it says. So Ezekiel 8, 28 verse 14 says that Satan was originally an anointed angel created by God. And Hebrews 1 verse 14 tells us that angels are ministering spirits sent to save those who will inherit salvation. So the devil known as Satan was an angel beloved, created by God to minister to God and to save his children. And Hebrews 1 verse 14 says that angels are spirits. So Satan whose angelic name is, was Lucifer. And we can find this in Isaiah 14, verse 12. His original name was Lucifer. Him not having a human body to appear in because he's a spirit, beloved, he chose to enter the serpent in order to deceive God's children. So when Satan twisted the truth by saying to Eve, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Beloved, although Eve knew part of this truth, it was not the whole truth that she knew, and this is why the enemy or Satan chose to deceive her instead of Adam. 
originally it was Adam that God told that you must not eat from this tree. So maybe Adam told Eve, but Eve added to the truth here saying that God said you must not touch it. But God never said you must not touch it. He only said that you must not eat it. And this is what the devil does to us today. If he knows that you don't know the whole truth of God's word, then he can deceive you. This is why, beloved, it's so important that we take our time to read the word of God ourselves. It's good to hear the word of God preached to us, but it's more beneficial when we read it one-on-one, on one, when we go to God directly instead of going to God through someone, because then you will not always hear the truth all of it but when you read the word of god then you are certain and sure that you are really hearing the word of god hundred percent and this is mainly why the devil knowing that eve did not know the whole truth chose to talk to her instead of talking to adam who heard the word of god from god's mouth so going on then satan said through the serpent you will certainly not die Satan twisted the truth here again, beloved, by saying you will certainly not die. But God has said that when you eat of the truth, you will die. And we know that, beloved, even though they didn't die instantly, first of all, their spirits were sp separated from God, which is spiritual death. And finally, we know that they eventually died. So Satan goes on to say in verse 5, For God knows that when you eat, from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Beloved, these people were already made in God's image. Not only that, but God actually breathed his spirit into them, making them both man and God on this earth. Moreover, God had given them power and authority to reign on this earth. So they were the gods of this world. So for Satan to come and tell them that they will be like God was a lie. And this is what Satan still does to us today, beloved. Even though we are born again, and being born again simply means that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And Jesus has said that when we receive him as our Lord and Savior, he comes and stays in us with his Father. So even though we are born again, when we have the the spirit of God living in us, beloved. Sometimes when we pray, we pray as if God is not with us. And this is because of lack of knowledge on the word of God. Most people will pray like this. Oh God, where are you? Show me your presence. God, let me see you. God, where are you? They will be calling out to God. God, come. God, come. Meanwhile, beloved, God has said in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us in Isaiah 41 verse 10. So for Satan to deceive you that because you have done something wrong, God has gotten away from you or God cannot hear your prayers anymore. It's a lie. If you are a born again child of God, know that Jesus has said also in uh, John 14, 16, that he has sent his Holy Spirit to help us and to be with us forever. And he also says in John 14, 23, that when we believe in him and make him our Lord and Savior, he and his father will come and live inside of us. So, beloved, all these scriptures makes us know that Jesus is and his Father and the Holy Spirit are all inside of us. So that whenever we need anything, beloved, we don't look out in the sky to call on God as if he's very far away. He is right here with us in our spirit. And if you know this truth, that God is right inside of you, beloved, it will help you and even help you to pray better prayers. Instead of praying long, unbelieving prayers, beloved, if you know that God is right inside of you, your prayers will be full of thanksgiving and few requests because you know that God is already inside you and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ he has already provided everything you need so when you are praying your prayers will be full of thanksgiving thanking him in advance for whatever he has done for you and the things that you need that you know that because he promises that he will give you all your needs according to his riches you know that he has provided everything you need so you just thank him instead of praying unbelieving prayers so beloved whenever you are tempted by the devil and he comes to deceive you that god is not with you god is right with you beloved as jesus has said here in john 14 23 that him his father and the holy spirit will come and stay in anyone who makes jesus christ their lord and savior thanks be to the lord jesus christ and so beloved going on 
in uh, Genesis 3 verse 6, it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So, beloved, this is the beginning of sin in the world. As soon as they disobeyed God to obey Satan and do what he asked, their eyes were open, meaning their spiritual eyes were closed. Their spirit separated from God, and now they had become evil as the devil wanted them to. So, beloved, when the devil told them that they will gain knowledge of good and evil and be like God, they already knew God, so they knew what was good. They knew that the knowledge of good they had knowledge of. But the only thing they gained after eating of this fruit was the knowledge of evil. And so this is why they became aware of their nakedness. Whenever we refuse to hear the word of God, beloved, and choose to do our things by our own self and choose to obey our flesh it always leads us into sin whenever we are tempted beloved to do something that god says we should not do but we go on and do anyway beloved it leads us into sin so the question is beloved, why did lucifer come to deceive god's children why did he made up this plan to deceive these children and isaiah 14 13 verse 14 answers this question and let us know that lucifer wanted to be like god so satan went to the garden to deceive them through the serpents because he wanted to be like god because he knows that he cannot be like god to go to god directly and claim god's power the only way he could be like god beloved was to go and deceive god's children and take the authority and power that god has given them so let's read isaiah 14 verse 13 to 14 where it says that satan has said in his heart i will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount on the congregation of the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Although, beloved, God had created Lucifer with special abilities. He didn't create him in his image nor likeness. Neither did he breathe his spirit into him or give him power and authority over all the things that he had created on earth. It was only Adam and Eve, God's children, whom God gave this authority to take dominion and subdue the earth. Therefore, if Satan wanted to be like God, beloved, and he cannot conquer God because God made him. The only other way that he could become God was to steal the authority that God had given his children to become gods of this world. And Satan was going to do this because he knew from Romans 6, 16, that you become servants to whom you obey. Remember that Satan knows the word of God very much. And in Luke 4, he even used scripture to deceive jesus christ but because jesus knew that he was the son of god and he is the son of god he rebuked satan and he left him so the devil the only plan that he was going to use to steal adam and eve's authority and being gods of this world so that he will become the god that he wanted to be was to deceive them so that when they obeyed him their power and authority will be transferred to him and start to say, beloved, they obeyed him. And as soon as they obeyed him, their power and authority quickly transferred to them. They became slaves, as our Romans 6, 16 says to the devil. And he got their power to become the God of this world. As um, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says that Satan is the God of this world. So this is how Satan got the power that God had originally given to us. But beloved, even though Satan's wish of becoming like God came true because he deceived Adam and Eve to get their power, his other uh, wish of wanting to exalt himself above the throne of God could not succeed because Isaiah 14, 14 says that God cast him down on earth. So beloved, continuing on from Genesis 3.8, it says that then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? Beloved, this is what sin does. It causes separation between us and God. Therefore, making it so hard for us to have communion and fellowship with God. It, beloved, it was not God who didn't want to see man. God actually wanted to see man and called out to him, Where are you? But it was man unwilling to see God, beloved, because of his guilt conscience. So Adam answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put me here, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. Adam and Eve, beloved, did not accept responsibility for their sins. They did not accept responsibility for their disobedience and blamed it on each other. And we also do the same things, beloved. Imagine how many marriages would have been saved if people accepted responsibility of their sins and asked forgiveness from each other. Beloved, these people, if they had asked forgiveness from God, would their story have changed? Nobody knows, but it could have. Because First John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, God is righteous and able to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So maybe they could have been forgiven, but who knows? Anyway, right now, Jesus Christ has come to die for our sins. And our first Corinthians 15 verse 21 says that just as one man brought sin into the world, so one man, Jesus Christ, has also brought uh, his righteousness to us. So even though these people allowed the devil to deceive them and true that they lost their righteousness and their um, being gods and their authority on this world, God through Jesus Christ, redeemed us from this curse. And now we can claim Jesus' victory over our lives, that the devil is no longer over us. He is no longer our master. We are no longer his slaves because we are children of God. Jesus Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and made us children of God. He has made us right with God. So, beloved, continuing on, um, Genesis 3 verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all the animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. So God pronounced the curse, beloved, on the serpent who allowed himself to be used and it lost its legs. Beloved, Jesus has said in Luke um, 17 verse 1 that things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe through whom they come. Beloved, the enemy is always looking for people to bring out his wishes. The same way as God uses people to bless others, there's the same way that the enemy, who is Satan, also uses people to bring our bad things and to bring curses to people. So the question is, beloved, are you using, making yourself available for the devil to use you to destroy people's life by destroying their reputation or by being mean to them? Or are you being used by the Holy Spirit to bring our glory and to bring praise to God through the way you minister to people? Beloved, whatever you do, make sure that you are doing it so that God's name will be glorified in it. And know that whatever you do on this earth, as Jesus says, you will have uh, your reward to you. So if you are doing it to bless God's people, then know that you have a good reward with the Lord. But if you are use, letting the devil use you, beloved, to tarnish someone's image, to spoil someone's good name, beloved, then know that when it's time for God to bring the enemy his cares, Satan his cares, you will get yours along with the enemy. And as we can see here, it was the serpent who even got his um, punishment first before the devil himself. So let's go on, beloved. So God continues to curse the devil and said in Genesis 3 verse 15, I'll make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head and you will bite her offspring's heel. So beloved, the second part of this punishment was for Satan himself. The first part was for the serpent who allowed himself for the devil to use him. He lost his legs. And this second part of the curse is for Satan himself, where God said that the woman's 
offspring who god was referring to jesus christ as the new testament makes sense to know that jesus will crush the devil's head and this is why it says in uh, colossians 2 15 that on the cross jesus christ who is the offspring of the woman defeated all powers and forces he let the whole world see them being led away as prisoners when he celebrated his victory so beloved, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this prophecy in um, Genesis 3.15 came to pass when Jesus Christ um, crushed Satan's head by defeating death and rising on the third day. And in Revelation 1 verse 18, Jesus says, I am the living one. I was dead and now I am alive. Look, I am alive forevermore. Wow. And I hold the keys of death and hell. Beloved, this is what we are all waiting for. It is already accomplished, but we are waiting for the day that we see Jesus Christ come on back to take us with him. Beloved, this thing that brought cares to man, God in his own power make Jesus Christ, beloved, to come and take this curse away from us. So even though God was giving this curse, beloved, in Genesis chapter 3, he already made a plan that devil, you are not going to do have dominion over my children forever because I'm sending my own son. My own son through this woman will come and defeat you, will come and crush your head. Oh, beloved, thanks be to God because this prophecy has come true. And this is why we have gotten our authority back. So, beloved, even though Adam and Eve got this curse, know that Jesus Christ has already redeemed this. And this happened 2,000 years ago. So we are no longer under this curse that Adam and Eve are going to get now. So to the woman, God said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plant of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Beloved, they received this punishment because Galatians 6-7 says that do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. Beloved, and also Romans 6.23 let us know that the wages of sin is death. So for what they had done by disobeying God, the only thing that they received, the reward of their punishment was death. So they reaped what they sowed. God told them that, beloved, they would die when they eat of the tree. And because God's word must always come true, they died. And so uh, in verse 20 of Genesis chapter 3, Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for them, for Adam and his wife, and clothed them. Beloved, even though they had disobeyed, God had compassion on them and provided them with better clothing compared to the leaves they covered themselves with. Beloved, the leaves could not protect them from the harsh weather conditions that were going to come. They could not be provided protected from the rainy season. They could not be protected from the scorching sun by the leaves, beloved. And God knew what would be better for them. God provided them with the skin of an animal, beloved, that real leather to protect their nakedness and to protect them against harsh weather conditions. Beloved, see how God loves us. Even in their sinful state, God still had compassion and gave them the right, the better thing for them beloved god loves us so much beloved and whenever we think that uh, we have a need beloved all we have to do is to bring it to god because as we can see god loves us he cares more for us he sees plans for us the bible says are good and not evil and this is why he says in our uh, matthew 6 31 to 33 that even though but beloved we have needs we have material needs 
things that we need on our body to uh, be able to live life successfully. Beloved, we have all these needs, but we should not make our focus on these things. Instead, we should focus on his things first. And all these things, the food, the clothing, the cars, the houses, the riches that the world is chasing after beloved god says they will come chasing after us god loves us so much beloved even when adam and eve disobeyed god still had mercy to protect them with better clothing how much more we who are saved now by believing in jesus christ how much more would god protect us and provide for us beloved we are certainly blessed so beloved continuing from genesis 20 um chapter 3 verse 22 and god the lord god said the man has now become like one of us knowing good and evil he must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat it and live forever so the lord god banished him from the garden of eden to work the ground from which he had been taken after he drove them out he placed on the east side of the garden of eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guide the way to the tree of life beloved god drove them from the garden not because he was angry with them no he actually drove them out to protect them so that they would not take of the tree of life in their sinful state and live forever being sinners and God did this, beloved, because he had already made up a plan. And what is this plan? This plan is found in John 3, 6. For God so loved the world, that is why he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in Jesus Christ will not perish, but have everlasting life. God had already made this plan, beloved. And he made this plan to redeem them from the curse so that we will not live in sin forever. Because what had happened was going to make Adam's descendants all become sinners. And God would not want them to eat from this tree. Once they ate from the tree of life, they will live forever. And God didn't want them to be sinners forever. So he made up this plan that one day my son will come on this earth. And my, son, my son's death will redeem you from this curse so that you can have everlasting life with me. So when you make Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, beloved, not only does your individual sins get forgiven, but the sin nature you inherited from Adam and Eve also gets forgiven. And this is why you become born again, because you become a new creature. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you as if you've never sinned before. And God sees you like he saw Adam and Eve when they had not sinned. So beloved, it's so important that if you are not born again, you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And this is the only way that we get to go to heaven and spend eternity with God too. You are blessed. Thank you so much, brother, for joining me to do this study. We've come to the end of this study now. So join me next time when you do the part four. And please subscribe so that as soon as it becomes available, you'll be notified. God bless you and have a fruitful day.